Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see a few people here. I just do the last little checks here. Uh -huh. Hope everybody's doing good. All right. Okay, who do we have? Let's have a look. Good evening, Andres. How you doing? Nice to see you too. Friday already. Another week. All right, as usual. And wait till you tell me that everything is working, that you can hear me properly. We wait a few minutes. If you have any questions, fire away. Like that, we can wait for the room to fill up a little bit. So, Dirk, how you doing? Good evening, Dirk. Douglas, how you doing? Thanks to join. Thanks for joining. Um, let's see. I have the page here with the chat. All right. Now, soon ready to start. If I can get this to work. All right. Everybody sees me. Everybody hears me. That's that's exactly what we're looking for. That's work and done. Excellent. Okay. All right, guys. I'm gonna start. I don't know how's the weather up your way, everyone. It's very warm today. It's lovely. Actually, I'm not complaining. Finally fly fishing again tomorrow. Well done, Dirk. I'm waiting a little bit because it's a little bit way too warm at the moment. So we're going to wait a little bit. Dark, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Thanks for coming back. Good to see the usual suspect as usual. Um, all right. So, yeah, it is very, very, very warm here. And the uh, water is, I'd say, uh, really hot. So we're leaving the, the pike alone at the moment. So roasting, you know, as well. Yeah, everybody's roasting. It's good. I enjoy it. I'm not complaining. We have all winter. Um, sound video is good, Douglas. Thank you. Question, do you have a, your predator vice mounted on the board? Where did you get a piece to mount it onto the board? Uh, the board is made by an English dude. Um, I have him on. He doesn't have a website uh, or an Instagram. He's just old school kind of guy. But he makes this beautiful base. Um, I, um, I have a video, uh, I think, on my on the channel here. Um, I can get you his name. Uh, let me see. So yeah, he makes them and uh, sells them. They're very good value. This is a method of bamboo. I really like it because there is uh, the bin tray on the knit. So that is the best. Now, I think I did include his email on the on the video of the showing the base. I might do an update video on that base and the, the device that I use. I have quite, quite a few people asking me. Uh, especially on Instagram. So the guy's name is Mike Johnson on uh, Facebook. So if you find him, uh, give him a bell, tell him that I sent you and he'll be more than happy to, to make these boards. He has many different types. He makes vice, vices as well and uh, many different types of um, apparatus, uh, tool holders and things like that. So they're pretty, pretty good. Uh, Dirk, yeah, I see that, yeah. And Belgium and Germany got really bad with the floodings. Yeah, sad to see, but unfortunately that's going to be a more more and more common sight, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, weather is changing, that's definitely, you can deny it, but it is. We're seeing extremes every year, so sad, sad for these people, but... Oh, he's uh, 
is lacking bamboo with the corona. I think, yeah, there's a lack of everything at the moment. I think there's less and less things to be shipped. I don't know if it's Corona or the Suez Canal that has fucked up everything, but the chain of supply on many, many items is very, very disrupted at the moment. So, Trevor, how you doing? <coughs> so, yes, with the hot and roasting weather we're having at the moment, I'm leaving the pike fishing on the side. Uh, I'm leaving them quiet at the moment. I thought I was going to get back to it because we had a bit of rain last week, which is kind of good because uh, we had a little bit of fresh water in that nice warm water at the moment so uh, kind of freshen up for the pike it's good to see but um yeah so i'm i'm kind of thinking of the good days and when the water is going to get a little bit cooler um obviously thinking in the future more september october uh once we're going to have a, a nice drop in temperature and that the pike are going to start eating properly and eating uh big flies we're going to go back to the big flies for the autumn this is one time uh, autumn winter and early spring that i like fishing big flies so as usual big flies don't have to be super heavy um that's why synthetic is a good thing but i really do like uh, tying them as well uh, in natural um, so this is just bucktail and schlappens a bit of flash and some rubber legs as well just to give it a little bit more bounce the the head is fairly i wouldn't say thick but uh it's fairly would full enough to give a nice big profile to the fly so the articulation is on the front of the fly usual six knot hook kind of centered about Maybe like, see if you can see properly on this. So really like it. Has a nice movement in the water due to the to the articulation. A nice head that is definitely slow sink. So you can fish that. Uh, usually I fish them either way from an intermediate sink tree when they are still s standing in the shallows, swimming in the shallows. And uh, once they start to get a little bit deeper, you can change and start fishing those on a on an S5 or S6 if you want so it's a nice versatile fly pushes a lot of water um, and has fantastic movement because a, a tail made of feather I don't think you can really beat how supple feathers are once they're wet so tons and ton ton tons of movement I really like those uh, so I'm gonna tie one tonight um, probably planning another stream next friday so probably do another another large fly i don't tie too many double hook flies uh but this one would be an exception that'll be the one type that i tie on the double hook it's fairly similar to this one uh but i like it as well it has a, a more uh, flatter profile uh, more for uh, a jerk movement so no questions all good um, I know there's quite a few newcomers as well, either way to fly fishing uh, for pike or fly tying, which is kind of go together. But I had some people asking um, to do kind of a, uh, how could you say, startup video, uh, the basics if you want, and particularly how to uh, strike a fish once you feel that bite. How do I hit the fish? So uh, a little bit hard to demonstrate on a on a on a stream. So I'll probably will do it uh, with one of the vlogs. Uh, once I'll be going back out fishing for pike, I'll probably do that. So if you have any requests like that, uh, they could be simple requests like that, like how to to strike on the fish. It's uh, maybe something that people know, but uh, newcomers uh, usually have a, a hard time with that uh, sort of techniques so i'll be doing that up wild man how you doing all the way from ohio so for this one six knot hook and we're going to use a uh, 40 mil uh, this is a big game shank from flyman you can make it yourself but uh, or you can buy it but that's the 40 mil from flyman i am going to use schlappens uh, today we're going to go i wanted to tie a red and black one because it is a definite 
classic so we'll have some black schlappens and some red one as well red and black we're gonna go for a little bit of flash uh, i like to go with the lateral scales especially these ones these ones are well, the peacock these ones or pearl root beer which is really much um, like like peacock coloring really like them discreet but they do flash a lot and of course bucktail we're going to go with the red i think this is even a this look like, like more like a, yeah it's a fluoro red it's kind of a brighter red i like it a little bit more than a dark blood red a little bit more punchy so i'm going to start by tying the tail Yeah, I can hear everybody cutting the grass outside now. That kind of weather. Yeah, big flies. They are fun to fish. I especially like fishing those because they are slow sink, so they you don't need to to fish them fast so it's a nice um, prospecting fly you can you can cover a good bit of ground nice and slow so the pike have time to home onto them now try to select schlappens that are looking good out of the pack get some nice black ones here and we get some red ones Schlappens could be a little bit dicey when you buy them online. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. Uh, but I've been getting the one from Vineyard for quite a good few years now, and I've been fairly happy with the quality of them. Other brand let me down as well. Sometimes you buy a pack and they're really nice, and sometimes you buy another pack and they're absolutely awful. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go with one black schlappen and one red we're going to put the red on the inside of the hook and then the black at the front of it kind of create a, a nice core so especially if you get the the red schlappen larger than the black one on the outside you can get a nice profile and a nice color sticking out you can really see that red pumping as you see, schlappens usually curve to one side. No feathers are straight. There's always always a bit of a bend on this one, like you see. Nice bend. So this one's going to go on the other side of the hook. So you want the feathers to open up so they like that. They, they kind of pulse a lot more when you strip. And the other one. Try to get them nice, same size, want that fly to be balanced. Put these two on the other side. Yeah, so usually those big flies with a lot of feathers and and bucktail are usually nicknamed chicken flies because you might as well cast a chicken, a full chicken. Uh, I like to double up the feathers at the back because uh, if you lose one, you still have three to fish. Uh, they are fairly resilient. Uh, you'll be able to catch many pike with those without snapping them unless you're unlucky so as you can see we have a nice opening one set curving on the outside so is the other one and we're going to put a little bit of flash now so that lateral scale no need to put too much just going to put one on each side because they are so long i'll go and tie it maybe like a 70 dirty just so it sticks at the end of the schlappens like this like that 
as you see it nice reflection it's really really nice it's discreet but it punched a lot of reflections so bring the the tag back so that you have one short one here and then the long one that goes all the way and back we'll do that on the other side Bring back the tag and tie up. There you go. That's basically the tail of the fly. Secure. Now I'm going to start with the bucktail. I'm going to try to make this fly give it a nice profile so the first bunch of bucktail we're going to put we're not going to put too much we're going to have just enough to to have a nice bit of bucktail all around the hook and we're not going to pull too hard on the thread and we don't want that first layer of bucktail to flare too much we want to kind of flare a little bit that it goes over the soft feathers okay we don't want it to, to flare at the too much that's for the head part that's why we need the most volume okay now put the bucktail on and then with your finger push it all around the shank make sure it's all around help it a bit okay once you have it all around like this now don't singe it too hard just leave it as it is and bring it forward and trapping the rest that's it so like that we we have a low profile now we don't want too much don't want too much flare here now bring the thread forward a little bit i put another bunch same again but this one we're going to start to flare it a little bit more victor good evening thanks for joining us again nice to see you victor and again spread it around make sure that you have bucktail all around your fly and this one we will singe it a little bit just to make it flare out a little bit more and bring it all the way to the front and we do one last layer now if you don't want to put less bucktail you can do just two layers and fill the gap in between just with some color thread or some chenille you don't have to put anything in the middle if you want you can just leave your normal thread just move it forward all the way to the front but i like to have it nice and full so i don't put that much bucktail on just enough to go all the way around I pinch it down Make sure it goes all the way around, spin it a little bit and singe it. There you go, that's basically the back so nothing complicated as you see very easy we're not going to make anything difficult they do work they fish really well so no point to over complicate everything all right now we put the shank on move a little bit my vice so you can see and now we go for the head if you have any question up to now just fire away you can do any color combo that you want don't have to stay with that 
this is kind of a good old classic too like all right secure that shank just clip the fly away and away we go for the head this is fairly simple nearly the same Nice base of thread on that shank. Put some glue. Now we're going to walk on the head. So the head is basically we have the back side. It's more for the undulation, and the head. It's all about pushing water and <clears throat> and changing direction. So now this one we're going to do one layer reverse tie because we're going to bring a nice flare now to the back of the head so that's going to open up here we're going to have a nice opening here so the bucktail is not going to get too close to this bucktail we have a nice opening in between so it's going to help to create a little bit of a hollow for the fly to move a little bit more. Don't know if we can see it here. It's a dark fly, this one. But this is the head down here. And you see that reverse tie here. It's nice and open. Thank you, new supporter. I don't know who it is, but thank you very much. <laughs> Aaron, thank you very much. Um, thanks for joining. Well, thank you very much for the donation, guys. As usual, they are more than appreciated. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe on the lighter color fly, you might see the head being a lot more open with that layer. So this is the shank here. So you can see all the hairs are nice and open. So that creates a nice open space for that fly to be really mobile. Now rubber legs, uh, I'm going to get there in a minute. You don't have to put rubber legs, but um, on some flies I do put it, put some. The, they do, they do, once they're wet, the, the rubber kind of separate itself from the bucktail and uh, just adds a bit more movement. But you don't have to put it. Uh, it's up, up to you. It's like optional, totally optional. So now we're going to reverse tie that part. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you very much. Thanks for your support, man. All right, I'm going to reverse that. So as usual, make sure it's all the way around. This one, I'm going to singe it. So it's going to flare. Make sure you have bucktail all around, nice and even. Now you can use tools to reverse tie, like an old pen or anything hollow. There are special tools now that they sell. Uh, you know me, I'm kind of old school. I like to use my fingers. So I bring them back. White man, thank you very much for your super chat. Thank you guys. Very generous today. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Israel, build a little dam of thread in front just to hold that buckle back. There you go. So now we have our nice opening here between the the body and the start of the head. It's nice and open. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Okay. As you can see now on the 40 mil shank, we have 
a little bit of the wire and you see where the end of the wire you have that little open gap okay we're going to bring the thread all the way to here okay so move up the thread and go into that open gap here so this is where we're going to start the first layer of uh, for the head uh, so that's going to be just um, basically like building a bulkhead uh, we're going to take we're going to start mixing a little bit of the black uh, bucktail with some red so we go about 50 50 there now it depends how much you want that fly to be buoyant so if you want really a fly that sinks really slow and sits high just play with the amount of bucktail that you put but just to show you we're going to lose quite a few hair in the mixing process as well so i just have two little clumps i have a red one here and i have a black one here so i'm going to put them opposite side and then we're going to mix them so put them flat on the board and then start shuffling them in and out till you get a nice mix between all the fibers all the hairs i mean Shuffle all that and then try to bring them all to the same length. So you grab them, you have your bunch of hair like that here. So you see there's some really long ones here. You just grab the end of the long ones and bring them back in the middle. And then do the same on the other side. You see here we have some really long ones that are escaping. We pull them and bring them back in the middle. Repeat that a few times till you have a nice a nice bundle of hair so the advantage of doing that is that you create a really nice profile because all of the hairs are not in a straight cut you have some with the cut you have some with the natural ending of the hair so you have a nice mixture they don't all meet at the same place you get some short one you get some long ones so that's going to create a really nice natural head without the need of clipping it or playing hairdresser for about 20 minutes after. So normally that fly, you shouldn't have to clip it or clean it after or tidy it up. All right, we're gonna put that over the top, right in the middle, 50-50, the three loose wraps, and then same thing, just push all those hairs all the way around Now you can singe it, opens up. Uh, you will have some that will fall out, which is normal. That's why we put a little bit extra. Make sure it's all around. We have hair all around. Bring it back, a little bit like reverse tying now. And we build a little dam of thread at the front. Now at this stage, once we've done that first section of head, I like to put a little bit more flash. We can put some um, pectoral fins, fins as well. So you can put some uh, grizzly saddle. You can put some anything that you want. I'm just going to go with a with a schlappen. Now here you can go either way with a full one, or if you want a bit more discreet, just to have a little bit of a side pectoral fin you just kind of just use the tip of the schlappen like this and that will make a nice little fin on the side i put one here put another one so i'm just using just the top of the schlappen like that on the side now you totally open to use the whole feather like i have on that black and olive one i like a short one as well it's kind of nice now 
Another couple of lateral scales now. Same. Tie them about 70 30. Just going to tie them just slightly above the feather. Okay, at the top here, just on, on the side of it. Not right on the side, but just above. Just to give it a little bit more freedom. At that stage, if you want to add rubber legs, you can add rubber legs as well. All right, get in there, making sure everything is where it needs to be. Uh, rubber legs, if, if you like, if you want rubber legs for extra movement, uh, I like using the round ones. I don't really like using the flat ones. Um, I feel the round ones are better all, uh, all around. Um, they're a lot more resistant as well. You can really pull on them. They are really, really good. They don't break that easy. Uh, I find the flat one, the, the pike teeth always manage to get into them and get slashed very, very quickly. So I don't really use too many of them like that. Um, this is, this is, uh, where did I buy that? I bought that on I think on on eBay and I get so much of it it's like a big I mean it's it's one it's one meter long and there is I don't know how many in that it must be about like 30 40 one meter long strips so you have a lot. No need to make them too long because you, you want a little bit of bounce with them. You don't want to make them too long so they get stuck and they kind of with their own weight they start holding the fly or just burying themselves in the bucktail so I make them about uh, five seven centimeters long a bit more maybe eight these ones just to make sure that you have that nice bounce in the in the rubber in the elastic Yes, they're usually not uh, sold that way in in um, in shops uh, because it's too big of a bundle. I think uh, they'll be losing money. They rather sell it on a smaller quantity for a bigger price. But these 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 um, are exactly the same that you would buy, but you get the whole bunch. All right, uh, lots of movement in the head. We have all these rubber legs now. We're going to bring them at the back. I'm going to finish that head. Okay. Now, to finish the head, we're going to do exactly like we did before I'm going to mix the red and the black now because we are getting we are getting closer to the front I want a little bit more black than red so I'm going to go maybe with a 40 60 percent or 30 70 percent black put more black just to get in that nice 
dark head at the front create a good bit of contrast in the fly and there I would add a little bit more hair I would make it a little bit more bulky so I had a little bit more than what I did on the first layer just be a little bit more generous with your bucktail so mix it all over Again, you arrive with a nice messy bunch like that. Grab the loose one at the end, bring them back to the middle. Do the same. Then with your hand, you can push them back a little bit. But you don't want to do like a hair stacker where they're all going to be at the same length. You want that to be messy a little bit because nothing is straight i mean you don't have right angle right angles and straight lines in nature it's always curves and irregularities so same for the head of your fly like that you create a nice big profile joseph your dad caught a 40 plus musky on the flasher pattern a couple of days ago brilliant the flasher telling you easy fly to tie and catches fish all day long here on the broad i'm delighted he got a, a nice musky on it that's really good should get muskies on this one i'm pretty sure all right so we bring the thread forward a little bit we don't want to put it right in front of that head Three loose turns and then push it down, push it all around. Make sure it's nice and even. Once you have the hairs all around, you're happy with the quantity, the proportions, then you can singe it and make it flare. Wild man, yeah, I can do a surface fly. I can do a popper. We can do that. Poppers are very easy now because of the of the pre-made heads. I mean, you get the the double barrel or the howitzer heads from flymen, and you're sorted. You put anything at the back, or you put that at the front of any fly, and you have a really good popper. Um, I'm not a huge fan of uh, uh, stacking deer deer hair belly hair to make poppers like like dalbrook divers they do work great but they're an awful lot of work like so i just i just like using the the double barrel heads the advantage of the double barrel heads is that you can use them as a popper or as a diver it's a really really great head really nice design that they've came up with all right we finish that i'm gonna push all the hair back I'm going to give it a little bit of UV at the front just to secure everything let that soak in a little bit and zap it Actually, I have to have a look if I have some heads left over somewhere. I think I do have some heads. We can do a popper. We can do a popper. So, there you go. I want to try just to pull that back, bring you back into focus. So there you go that's that's what i call the chicken fly <laughs> you can see better now here that reverse bucktail at the back of the head keeping that head nice and open so you have 
maximum movement without the, f the hair of the head getting tangled. You have that nice opening. But it doesn't look weird once it's all in one. You have a nice profile from top to bottom. You can see the schlappen on the side. You do this caudal pectoral fins here and here. A little bit of rubber. That flash. Not too heavy, but still, you see, it depends on the way it catches the light. I really like that that lateral scale. Oh, there you go. Another one ready for your box. Uh, the only problem with this fly is that you don't want to squeeze them too much when you when you store them. Uh, you want to keep as much maximum bulk as possible. Um, especially when you finish fishing, make sure you dry them properly. Uh, don't leave them sitting flat uh, in the box because it'll it'll just completely change their shape after. Uh, I like to all. Uh, thank you, Trevor. All these flies, I like to keep them uh, in a what's what is that called? Uh, it's a document case, I think, a cheap plastic document case where I put a couple of rails, and they're basically with a few snaps. They're just hanging like this in the box they're not uh, uh, flat or put into a, a foam box like so all my bucktail uh, especially the the nice flary one like this i like to keep them in a, in a box like that uh, i'll probably show you um, the box next stream if you're interested uh, it's a very simple job to do nothing complicated but it really keeps your fly brilliant and the good thing is that uh, that type of box you can once you're finished fishing, you just hang your fly and they dry in the box. You just open the lid, let them dry and they'll dry naturally and always retain a nice round shape. So it's not not a big problem with synthetic flies, with bait fish pattern or things like that, because you don't really care too much uh, because they're not going to deform themselves they're not going to change shape uh, but anything natural like that feathers and and, and bucktail uh, i don't like to squeeze them uh, especially when they're wet so keep that shape keep that nice natural flare shape i will take a picture of this one tomorrow i'll pull it on instagram so you can have a better look at it better details but Main thing is that big opening there, that reverse tying, just to keep everything moving. Yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't use too much uh, naturals, but once I start, I really get back into the hang of it and really like uh, fishing them and tying them. Really, really good flies. And they are fairly resilient as well. You you can keep these flies for many, many pike before you have to put them <laughs> into the graveyard. Thank you, Douglas. I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining tonight. Yeah, you can see now the, the streams have started to get a little bit shorter uh, i just tie one fly per stream i think it's a, a nice balance uh, we keep it just under the hour it's a nice like that people want to rewatch it it's not too boring it's not too long and uh, it's not fast so people can't understand what's going on too so i think we have a nice balance now so next week uh yeah maybe a popper i don't know now now that uh, you're throwing a popper in the works i might do a popper but like I said, poppers are very, very easy to do with with the with all the heads that you can find now uh, commercially made. And I wouldn't be mad to do a stack D hair just simply because it's time consuming. And uh, but I mean, there is tons of videos out there to to make your own stack D hair. Uh, but they do work as well. Like it's it is. Uh, an awesome fly like especially a Dahlberg diver I absolutely love using them in lily pads here a little bit of rabbit strip at the back 
and the pike come miles away for them wild man thank you guys it's been a pleasure i'll just hang on a couple of seconds to see if you have any more questions thanks for the one who've been asking for different subjects to be treated uh, either way in the vlogs or in the tying videos so it seems that it is working now spread the love spread the video uh, click the like button uh, i don't like telling you to do that but uh, it does help to spread the videos to other people who might need to see uh, videos like that and uh, it's a kind of a nice thing to do oh yes you can make popper heads out of all kinds of foam as long as it floats and it's a little bit resilient to the pike teeth you can use anything you can use a cork of a wine bottle uh you can use old flip-flops uh anything like that works absolutely perfect aaron thank you very much for your super chat thank you thanks again guys you guys rocks thanks for the support it's awesome i really enjoy doing these streams um i'll see you yeah next week keep an eye out on instagram and uh reach me there and um yeah spread the love Click the like button, subscribe, and all that, uh, all that stuff. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next week. And if you can go fishing this week, enjoy it. Uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to go to the beach. Get a nice little rest. All right, Andres, thank you very much. Easy tie, definitely. Don't want to complicate things. It's when you complicate things that it gets really dodgy. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you very much. I wish you a really good evening. Have a great weekend and uh, we shall see you next week thanks again bye